Victrix FM, brought to you by Victrix Entrepreneurs. Here's your host, single mum, entrepreneur and brain injury survivor, Michelle Williams. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Victress FM, where every week I'll be introducing you to inspiring women who have gone after their dreams and refused to give up, even in the face of extreme adversity. We'll be diving into her victories and her defeats and discovering the lessons that she's learnt along the way, all with the aim of inspiring you to step into your own unique power to create a business and life that you love. Today, I was delighted to invite Diodi Vanderberg onto the show. Diodi is the founder of Grazing Social Media and the Lady Boss lineup, where she mentors five ladies over 12 weeks on how to work from home, building their own successful online businesses. Diodi has a really inspiring story of triumph over adversity, having suffered the loss of her 15 week premature baby girl and then fleeing a psychologically abusive relationship. Having triumphed over the adversity of her past and built up her own successful online business as a single mum, Diodi is now passionate about helping other women in difficult situations create their own freedom and financial independence too. Diodi's story of feminine strength and courage is so, so inspiring. So I hope that you enjoy this interview as much as I did. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Victress FM where I'm really delighted to welcome today Diodi van der Berg. Welcome Diodi and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on the show Michelle, I appreciate it. Oh, I'm so pleased that you could join us because as you know, the uh, theme of Victress FM podcast is all about celebrating women's triumph over adversity because I really want to inspire women that we all have the choice of how we respond to life's challenges and to decide if we want to be the victim or victress of our own lives. And specifically, I'm interested in exploring how sometimes the adversity that we go through shapes us into the person that we become and takes us onto our entrepreneurial journeys. And I know that you've got a really inspiring story of triumph over adversity, um, which has taken you onto a new entrepreneurial path. So I wondered if you wouldn't mind sharing with us today a little bit about your victory story uh, today, please, DOD. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, So I was in a really horrible uh, narcissistic relationship a couple of years ago, and um, I have a son, and I had a full-time job, and I was content where I was um, until I wasn't. (laughs) Um, So I I desperately needed to get out of the relationship um, and be able to provide for myself and my son. Mm -hmm. And South Africa especially, it, it's difficult, um, you know, with the economy, it's difficult to do that as a single parent. Um, so I started looking for, you know, uh, working online opportunities and um, I did eventually train myself. I'm a social media specialist, so I did go into that. But that was, I think, the start of the process for me. Mm-hmm. But then about six months into this new journey, um, you know, things just fell apart. We, um, you know, he cheated on me. Uh, there was another woman involved and um, I just kind of had to pack my bags and go. And then we, you know, we did the divorce thing and we went through court to fight for custody for my son. And um, it was a difficult time. And um, I actually, looking back now, I think it was the perfect perfect thing and it was the perfect timing um, because I don't think I would have taken such a huge leap um, you know if, if I didn't have you know those circumstances if, if there was no adversity so um, yeah definitely I had some tough calls and it was really um, it was it was a devastating position but it pushed me forward and um, I wanted to be at home full time for my son. I wanted to be able to take care of him. Um, I didn't want to struggle every month. So I took the leap and um, yeah, today it's three years later, I have a successful online business. I work from home, I'm available for my son. Um, Yeah, so that's kind of hard. I mean, it, it sounds amazing because I think, you know, there's a lot of people that perhaps might be in a similar position that are, you know, single parents and they want to, 
uh, create a business that will allow them to have more flexibility to be there for their children and also to give them that freedom and financial security. So, you know, what were the steps that you went through to go from, you know, where you were um, to actually creating this business? How, how, what was that journey like and, and how did you get started with that? Um, well, I started off on my own. Um, <laughs> I think Google and Pinterest was at that stage my best friend. Um, so I just Googled everything and then I came across, um, I don't remember who it is, but um, they have this whole VA, you know, virtual assistant um, business where they train people online. And a part of this was social media. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that's something I could do. <laughs> you know, you don't want to just jump into something and you don't know what's going on. So I chose social media, but um, I chose not to go the coaching path. Mm -hmm. um, I had to struggle. It took me about six months uh, to get to a point where I could get my first client. And I think eight months into my journey, that's when I uh, you know, got my first paying client. Um, so it's, it's basically, I was just determined and um, I googled what I could, I Pinterest what I could, I was, you know, attending every webinar, <laughs> I was downloading every free resource or checklist or, you know, whatever you get out there. And um, so I started off myself, but then I was lucky because my first client, um, she has, it's a Canadian lady called Andrea, so she has an agency in Canada and she took me on as a contractor mm -hmm. and she actually became my mentor. So. Um, not only was I lucky enough to find, uh, you know, my first client and when you convert the currencies, it was actually a really, um, it, the job paid well. And uh, yeah, she also mentored me and she taught me more about social media and, you know, writing the reports and how to do strategies. Yeah. So up until about eight months, um, that was my journey. And then I think after, you know, after I went through the court, um, you know, custody for my son and the divorce and all of that, um, I realized that I was basically strong enough to survive a lot. Mm. And I spoke to my mentor and I said to you know, how can I grow this business? Um, I loved her and I loved working for her, but I didn't want to be just there. I wanted to, you know, be so much more. Yeah. And um, she gave me a couple of tips and pointers. And at one stage, I did actually invest in a proper coach, um, mm -hmm. which is the choice that I've ever made um, and then in January this year um, I, I turned 30 and in January I had this crisis you know I, I've always known that I wanted to make an impact but yeah. I just don't know how because I think we you know we, we are our own worst critics and um, so I was like you know who am I who am I to change lives or touch lives or inspire people and then I spoke to my mom and my mom actually told me, she said to me, um, you have been through so much and you have survived this much. And I don't even understand what you do. <laughs> my mom's a financial advisor. And uh, when people asked her what I do online, she, just, uh, she used to tell them, you know, I play on Facebook for money. <laughs> and, uh, so she said, you know, you can, you can help people who are still stuck where you were eight months ago or a year ago. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's how the lady boss lineup thing developed where I could actually, um, like you said earlier, there are a lot of women uh, either stuck in bad relationships or, you know, who need financial independence. Or maybe they're not stuck in a relationship, but they're in a situation and they want to get out of it. And by now, you know, three years later, I have enough knowledge and um, I've been down that path and I know what it's like. So I just sat down and about end of January, I just knew I woke up one morning and I was like, something clicked, the light bulb just came on. I was like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, this is how I can make an impact. I can't be a politician or a doctor or, you know, any of those, but I can help women, you know, in this situation if, if they're willing to be helped. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. And I love what you said, and I don't know how you said it exactly, but you, you said that, you know you can help people that were like you you know two years ago or three years ago or whatever it was and i think that's really um a great way to look at it because when we're quite often looking at, at who our ideal customer is I, I do believe that quite often it is an older version of ourselves do, do you agree with that yes definitely definitely yeah that's something that i really feel and i think some of the also some of the things you've talked about was sort of 
like making a difference in the world, having an impact and really finding your purpose. And I, I do believe that most women get to a certain stage in their life where they do really want to, to make a difference. So that's why I really um, wanted to get you on the show because I love what you're doing because you're, you're basically, you know, you, you talk about sort of helping with people with their social media, but it's much more than that because you're actually helping women to really empower themselves and create their own freedom and financial security um, with you know with the program that you're you're creating so could you talk through a little bit more because obviously you started out with as you said sort of social, social media management but you've your business has now evolved into so much more than that so can you explain a little bit more about that and, and what you're doing now for us please yeah, sure so um, my social media business at this point is um, I'm keeping it separate from the Lady Boss lineup uh, because I still have my clients and that is my main source of income. Mm-hmm. But um, like you just said, you know, we, we get to a point where we want to make an impact. And so the Lady Boss lineup is a passion project. So it's, it's separate from my business. But basically, I it, it's a 12 week program where I help women um, build up you know, uh, businesses online. So not necessarily in social media, but you know, whatever um, passion they have. So I, I help them realize their passion. So whether they want to blog full time or um, you know, they're selling products or whatever they want to do, I, I get behind the scenes and I go through the, you know, the tech stuff and the taxes and you know, all the technical stuff. And um, that's what I help them with. And then also, we only I only take five ladies at a time um, because I wanted to you know us to be close and connected and to form a bond so I was very lucky when I started out um, if I if I did a new email sequence or a funnel or something in my business I could just send it to my sister and uh, you know she'd go through it and give me some tips and pointers mm-hmm. and a lot of don't have that they don't have that support system so that is like the biggest thing for me in the lady boss the uh, lineup is not to go through it alone so I take five ladies and we can we, we you know we get to know each other we bond and but most importantly we support each other's businesses mm. so if they let's say I have two ladies now who are bloggers and one had troubling you know choosing her niche so you know we get together we brainstorm and you know we kind of bounce ideas off each other and just to get a better picture, you know, uh, you know, like a bird's eye view of everyone's business and, you know, um, what what they can do to improve it or just to support each other. So that is the Lady Boss lineup. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a 12, uh, 12 week program. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's not just social media. I think a lot of people, because when I introduce myself, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm a social media specialist. That's what I do. But that's not necessarily what I teach you to do. So if they want to be a virtual assistant, I can help them. I don't necessarily teach them all the ins and outs of that business. I unfortunately don't know everything. Mm-hmm. But you know, up your websites, uh, how to create funnels, how to do email sequences, all the tech stuff that you know, it's so broad that it, it spans across every business basically. Yeah. Um, I can help them with those, you know, setting up your accounts, um, how to market, I, especially for four weeks, the last four weeks of the program. We focus very heavily on growing your network and, um, you know, expanding, you know, marketing your accounts and all of that. So I think that's also probably the biggest part of your business is marketing and getting, you know, the word out there. So I help them with all the the behind the scenes stuff with the businesses. Oh, I I absolutely love that. And yeah, and, and particularly, you know, when people are starting out in business, any type of business, but particularly an online business, there's so much to know. And obviously you're talking about sort of sales funnels and things like that. And, you know, when you're starting out, you don't even know what a sales funnel is. So it's so important, isn't it, to have sort of people there that can help guide you through these things that are so important in um building up our audience and 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 getting our name out there really so i absolutely love that and i love what you're doing um i just wanted to ask you as well you know how because obviously you know you have gone through that adversity of getting you know uh, you know a, a relationship which was struggling and you had to get out and you had to raise your son on on your own but you mentioned a little bit earlier that if you hadn't have gone through that adversity you don't think that you would have actually gone on to this path is do you think that's because it kind of I think sometimes when your your back's up against the wall you kind of have no choice do do you it sort of it forces you perhaps to take 
drastic steps that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily have the courage to do unless you absolutely. is that is that what you you found with your own adversity yeah absolutely um i think uh, especially my the relationship oh, sorry the relationship i was in um you've kind of you get pushed down so you start doubting yourself and your abilities and all of that and going through this and you know like you say being backed into a corner that's when you really realize what you're capable of so if i didn't um and i think i said it a little bit earlier as well if there's nothing pushing you into the corner then we tend to be content with where we are you know so i would still probably be in my 9 to 5 um but i was pushed into that corner and i had to make a choice you know i could either just lie down and take it or i could fight back and not literally fight back but you know start my own business and take the leap so absolutely and i think it rings true for a lot of ladies you know when you're in that corner and it's fight or flight choose fight because we we are capable of so much and we don't know until we're pushed into you, you know pushed to the limits until we in that corner you don't know what you're capable of and yeah. that's how so i wouldn't say i was meek but i never knew that you know looking back now looking back 3 years ago I would never have thought that I would be where I am today, you know, working from home, being financially independent, um running my own business. It's absolutely amazing and none of that would have pushed me. You know, every every day that I get, you know, a little bit depressed or you know the past is just hammering away at the back of your head, that that motivates me. It motivates me to be better. Um yeah. You know, I would ever ever let my ex see any of my failures or see me struggle. So it's probably not the best thing but it keeps me going just to know that I'm better than where I was yeah. and I can start, you know going forward. Yeah, no, I I love that. I mean whatever it is that spurs you on I think is great. But I wanted to ask you as well because obviously it's a really brave thing to give up like a secure 9 to 5 to go after your dream of starting your own business and you know and I think particularly after you have been in a um sort of abusive or controlling relationship because you obviously your confidence does get knocked um and you you know you're constantly put down which perhaps would prevent some women from thinking that they could you know that they're able to do this so how you know how how did you actually go about doing it how do you think you overcame those sort of I think the self doubt that I think a lot of people have but I think particularly if you have come from a sort of abusive relationship you I think you you're more likely perhaps to have that uh lack of confidence and self doubt so how did you overcome that Um well when it started like I said I actually started looking at online opportunities before you know all the bad stuff started happening um I just knew that I was unhappy and I needed to make a plan yeah and uh, I think the universe kind of you know if you're religious i think it's god that looks after us if you're not religious it's just the universe mm. i don't know mm. but i feel like i had a guiding force and like i said 6 months um prior to everything just collapsing i actually started the journey and um when i found my first client like i said earlier um i was still working my 9 to 5 so i was still in my full time job yeah and I think I'm really really lucky that way. So by the time that things just, you know, crashed and everything went sideways, um I had the two jobs and I could actually the courts and uh, my I, I was a chef, so the hours were very very bad and the court were actually leaning towards my ex, you know, taking full custody of my son. Right. And but yeah, because I couldn't be there, you know, I was working late hours and so um that day i just walked out of the courtroom and i phoned my boss and i said to her listen i'm sorry i can't um it's for my son and i quit on the spot yeah and i'm blessed i think i'm so lucky that you know i started my journey earlier than um you know so that i was in a position where i could do it um yeah it yeah. was tough after after everything you know when i decided to leave my first client um and you know do it on my own it was scary and it is tough but at least i had my foot in the door and um i feel like i was really being guided there and i say to all the ladies that i interact with even if they don't take the program if there's something in the back of your head telling you to do it just mm-hmm. do it you have mm-hmm. to act on it because it's it's your guardian angel or something i don't know but it's telling you and um i i'm so lucky i listened to that voice in my head because i had the jump start and um 
yeah. I'll always look back to that and be exceptionally grateful that I did what I did when I did it. Yeah, and I love that because I think that we all have this inner voice sort of intuition, don't we? And a lot yeah. of women that I speak to say that they feel like there's meant to be more for them, but they're Absolutely. not necessarily sure what that more is. And I think that if you have that inner voice, um, it it's tell it's it's basically your soul talking to you um trying to show you the way and show you what your what your path is that's what i believe anyway because it's certainly happened for me in my life and from my mm. own experience some of the adversities that i've gone through in my life although they seemed you know awful at the time um I think it's those adversities that kind of led me onto the path that I'm now on, my entrepreneurial path. And um, and and I've grown so much as a person because I feel like I feel like the entrepreneurial journey, you know, it forces you to come out of your, your comfort zone, learn new things. I mean, do you do you find that you have grown as a person as you sort of started, launched and grown your business as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think when you first listen to that voice and, you know, the concept is so big, you know, you're so scared. I know when I, when I made that choice, I was terrified, you know, what do I know? I don't know anything about an online business. I don't know anything about, you know, actually managing social media for companies. Mm. Um, the moment you take that leap and you just listen to that voice, I, I believe you will never attempt to do something that you can't do. So, um, you know you have to take that step and it will guide you to the person that you're meant to be so like i said i don't think i was meek three years ago i just didn't realize how strong i was mm -hmm. and if i hadn't you know gone through the process and you know taken these steps taken the leaps um i mean i went out of my comfort zone completely several times in my business and it's scary and it's tough to do but after all of that i feel i'm, I'm a different person but a, a better version of myself. I feel, and I, I now I know I'm I'm strong enough to handle stuff. I know I have the leadership um, qualities that it takes to run a business. I've learned so much about myself that I never knew before, and probably because I was too scared to find out who I, you know, who I am. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. definitely pushed me to just open myself up to everything that I am and that I can be if I put my mind to it. And I love that because I think that fear holds um, so many of us back because of course it's it's much nicer and cosier to stay within our comfort zones, isn't it? But um, if, you do, if you do that, then you're never gonna realize your dreams and also discover your own potential, which um, obviously, you know, you've been doing over the past few years. Um, I wanted to ask you as well though, you know, over these past few years of you know starting your business what do you say have been the biggest lessons that you've learned from from these experiences over the past couple of years starting and growing your business oh, um i have definitely learned um not um, i mean obviously if you're building your own business you're emotionally attached to your business mm -hmm. but I've learned that um i've learned how to separate my emotions from my business so at the start, you know, when um, you're prospecting and you pitch a client and they say no, you kind of take it personally. And every time that happened, I would almost, you know, I would go into the slump and just kind of be there for a day or two. And I've learned not to do that anymore. So if a client tells me no, I believe or I know that they're not my clients. They weren't meant for me. Yeah. So I've definitely learned how to not... Um, also make emotional decisions about my business so um, when I'm not in a good space I know that I should step back and you know um, you know maybe calm down or do something else just to interrupt that pattern and then make an informed choice later on um, yeah. yeah so that's definitely one of the things I've learned and then also um, I've, <laughs> I don't know like I said the leadership qualities definitely um, I've, I've, I've learned how to communicate with people I was never able to do that before mm -hmm. um, yeah and uh, I think uh, the biggest thing is yeah <laughs> it was just emotional attachment to business um, business is business and um, yeah I've learned how to separate that yeah <clears throat> and I think that's really important because I think um, I don't know about you or if that I don't know if I'm just some sort of like business startup 
geek or something but well i i've i've had uh, my own business of, for the past 18 years and it's it's kind of like raising a child don't you think because you do you, they're like almost like your babies aren't they you do become very protective and nurturing of them do you find that as well or is that just me <laughs> <laughs> no definitely um you know i you get attached to your business and like you said it is your baby and you're raising it and you're watching it grow so mm. when you start it it's like a little idea and it grows into this big thing and um i think like with parenting you're very proud of whatever it accomplishes so yeah. when i get a really big client i'm proud and i'm happy um but yeah, for me it was just to really learn to to separate emotions from business because sometimes we we can't have it all and um you shouldn't let that get you down yeah absolutely I mean, yeah thought it was that way you i think i was too emotional about my business <laughs> mm. yeah and you mentioned something earlier about sort of not taking it to heart if you got like a, a no or a knockback from a client which i think is touches on another thing which i think is so important in business success which is a resilience you know that ability to bounce back i think is so so important but what do you i mean what do you personally think are sort of like really important traits or characteristics that we need to have to become successful um female entrepreneurs you definitely have to have patience uh, that's one of the very first lessons i've uh, learned as well um i'm not a very patient person but you need to have patience mm. you need to be determined um if you are not determined you it's so easy to give up and say you oh, i tried this and it didn't work so let's try something else or let's just you know stay in this situation so definitely patience and de- being determined to succeed yeah and yeah then i just thought of something but now i can't remember what the other one was <laughs> <laughs> maybe resilience which i again which is the thing that i said because it, you know it's all of those things you said you've got to have that determination passion as well i think is really important you've got to feel very passionate about what yeah. you're doing because i think if you don't then you know you don't have that real drive and motivation um yeah. but i loved what you said earlier as well about you know um your son has obviously been such a key driver in your you know your your motivation and your uh, drive for business success because you wanted to get out of that um your job as a chef which was unsociable hours so um it sounds like he's been like a real inspiration if you like for for your business success as well if i if i kind of understood that correctly yes yes definitely um and i think that falls in with the previous question as well um i think you have to have a really strong why um mm-hmm. if you're starting a business and it's just for more money um you won't be as dedicated to your business so my why was obviously you know um i <laughs> i deserved better than the relationship i was in Mm-hmm. but most importantly um I did it for my son. I wanted to be there for my son. I wanted to be able to provide for my son. And um there's a quote that says um you know it's it's not your job, let me just see. It's not your job to toughen our children up to face a cruel and harsh world. It's our job to raise children who will make the world a less cruel and harsh place. And I thought about that a lot and how can you raise your child you know with so much love and happiness and compassion for the world if you don't feel that inside yourself if your soul you mm-hmm. know is such dry and um so that yeah definitely my son was my motivation but also you know just to be the mother that he could look up to and, you know look back when he's grown up just be like you know that's my mom she's so yeah. inspirational she yeah. did it she made it um she's the strongest woman i know and that's why i'm doing it i want I want to be my son's everything. <laughs> uh, I love I love that and I think we're all the same as mums is that we you know we want to be good role role models for our children as well and I'm the same I mean my children are now 21 and 17 now but I've been raising them as a single parent as well for the past uh 10 years whilst whilst also uh starting launching and growing my business and you know and 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 the same you know I want to be a good role model for them and and make them realize that if you really want something you know it is possible you just have to be you know focused determined and passionate about what you're doing 
Um, hopefully those are lessons that I've passed on to them. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, we've talked about some of the characteristics that you think are really important for business success, but you know, I, I read a lot of um, personal development books and I listen to a lot of personal development um, podcasts and things like that. And, um, and I've got my own sort of daily rituals and, and routines, which, um, you know, hopefully keep me sort of positive and focused on success. But do you have any daily rituals or routines which really keep you in that sort of positive mindset and also uh, always focused on striving uh, to, to reach your goals and be the best version of yourself that you possibly can? I don't really have a ritual. Um, I've, I've thought about meditating, but <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't work so well for me. But what I have noticed is sticking to a routine. Um, you know, as long as I have a routine and I stick to my routine, I'm generally very happy. So, um, you know, it's, it's been three years since everything just um, happened. And I'm in a good place at this, uh, you know, where I am now. And as long as I stick to my routine, um, but I think the most important one is every morning when I wake up, I plan my day. So mm. I don't, not that I don't like change, but it, it helps me to stay focused when I know what I need to do for the day. Mm. And I definitely in the mornings, I plan out my day. Um, that's the most important thing for me. And then also um, when it gets tough in my business or when I'm stuck in a certain mindset, or you know, I'm in a position where I'm not making logical choices or I'm stuck, I tend to take a nap. Um, so I, I really believe in it. So I just go to bed and I just breathe. And then normally when I wake up, um, I, I have the answer or I'm in a better mindset and then I can continue my work um, mm. in trying to force things um, to just happen. Yeah. So those are the important things for me. But um, as long as I'm in my routine, I, I work well and I'm generally you know, positive and motivated and focused on my work. Yeah, and I love that because, you know, it's so important that we do properly plan out our day because I think that sometimes um, when we're entrepreneurs and we're working on our own and there's so many different things to do and we have to wear so many hats, it's so easy to get distracted, isn't it? You know, get distracted from the actual important thing that we're meant to be working on by our you know the emails in our inbox or the notifications coming up on social media and things like that so do you have any tips for anybody you know on how to stay focused you know obviously it's probably to do with you planning out your day I expect but do you have any other extra tips at all for people that do tend to find themselves getting distracted from the important tasks and, go and goals that they should be focused on yes definitely so um like I said, uh, planning out your day, that helps. But also have a to-do list. And um, a lot of people, when it comes to to-do list, uh, they, they they overcompensate or they put too much on there and then it's overwhelming. Mm. So I tend to list the things from, you know, um, most important to least important. And then I get the really important stuff uh, done first. Yeah. But also especially when you work online i think it's so easy like you said to get distracted um especially pinterest i know to limit my time on pinterest because i just get sucked into that black hole that mm. is one thing after another so be really mindful of what you do when you do something um compartmentalize i also i, I love watching ted talks and then i kind of end up you know not working anymore and just listening to the ted talk and you should really be very mindful of what you do with your time and what you're spending it on. Compartmentalize, you know, what is really important? What can you save as a link for later on and go back to it? Like what I do now is I have a little board and I save all the interesting stuff that I come across. I save it there. And then over the weekends, you know, I can just kind of go back and, you know, check it out. So if it was a TED talk I wanted to listen to, I can just go back to it. Or if there's a new article on something that's happening on social media, um, but it wasn't a priority, I could just over the weekend go back and read up on that. So I think you know, be mindful of what you spend your time on and then compartmentalize what is really important and what is something that you can postpone for a little bit later on. Oh, that's really, really valuable advice because I think even me, you know, I've been in business 18 years and I think, you know, when I first started then there wasn't any social media, but now obviously there's ever increasing social media channels that we kind of, you know, need to be on to promote our business. 
and you know personally i i find it difficult um sometimes you know i i sometimes get distracted from what i'm doing so i think those are like really valuable um pieces of advice that you've given there um i, want, I wanted to ask this as well isn't it? it's a question that i i normally ask most guests as well are there any um any books that have really inspired you along your victorious journey either personal development books or or business books that have really helped you on your journey I wish I could say there was, <laughs> but <laughs> I love reading, but um, I tend to, when I read, I want to escape what I'm in at the moment. So I prefer fictional books or novels, Yeah. but like I said, I do watch TED Talks. So if I do need a little bit of motivation or, you know, some inspiration, I, I definitely go the TED Talk route. Oh yeah, that's. That, I think it doesn't really matter whether it's a book. I mean, some people will read a book, some people will listen to a podcast or an audible, and like you say, TED talks as well. So um, positive and inspirational. So you know that that's really great as well. Um, yeah. I just wanted to ask you because we're going to have to be closing to uh, come into a close quite shortly. But you mm. know, in light of everything you have been through, the adversity that you've been through, and kind of the journey you've gone on and where you are now, if you could go back um, and give your younger self a really good piece of advice, what would that be? Um, Definitely to love yourself first. If I could go back to 18 year old me, that would be it. Just love yourself and you're capable of so much and you're stronger than you know. So just love yourself first and don't doubt yourself. Uh, You can do it. Whatever life throws your way, you can do it. Just be awesome. (laughs) Yeah, it's so important, that self-belief, isn't it? So important. Um, So also, I just wanted to sort of touch on um, this, uh, you know, the 12-week program that you're... um, that you offer to help women launch their online businesses because I know also you've got like a, a free gift that um, I wanted to mention to our listeners as well. So can you just tell us a little bit about that and um, and also how our, our listeners could actually uh, connect with you if they wanted to find out more about your, your programme and also the, the free gift that you have to offer? Yeah, so um, like I said earlier, I only take five ladies at a time and Um, Not everyone is in that space to take the journey and that's okay too. So uh, what I've done is I've created a very detailed checklist, um, how to build a successful business online checklist. Mm -hmm. And they can actually download that. Um, I think I gave you the link, but if not, I have a group on Facebook called Lady Boss Lineup. Mm -hmm. It's a see where you know we support each other even if you don't do the program um it's for ladies to network and um get the support for growing a business online so um you could just uh, join the group and then you can download the the freebie from there as well so it, it's really detailed it takes you from mindset uh, like my course um you know we cover the foundation uh, mindset and getting things ready until the end where it's about marketing and promoting and growing your network so the checklist also includes all of that it's um, basically my whole course compressed into a pdf um so yeah everyone anyone is um interested uh, you can definitely get the freebie from my facebook group Oh, that's brilliant and um i'll make sure that those uh the link to that to the to the checklist and also your facebook group is um included in the show notes and also over on the victorious entrepreneurs website and is that are you on instagram or anything or is facebook the sort of main social channel that you're on for people to contact you um for my business well i have obviously my personal profile and um, for my business i only have my social media business up yet um, for the Lady Boss lineup, I'm only focusing on Facebook for now, mm-hmm. but as I grow, um, I'll definitely add more, but I don't have anything else besides the Facebook group yet. No, brilliant. Well, I'll make sure that everybody is directed over to that on the show notes and on the uh, Victorious Entrepreneurs website as well. But I just wanted to thank you so much for, for joining us today, D.O.D., because I, I found your uh, story so interesting and I know will inspire lots of people. people. You know, there's so many women out there that um one have got a dream of starting their own sort of business anyway their own online business but also women that want to create more freedom and flexibility in their lives whether they're um in a relationship or not so you know the fact that you've done this as a single parent i know will inspire a lot of people so i just want to thank you so much for joining us today on victorious fm thank you so much dod 
Thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. I really just, I want to empower women and I just feel like no one deserves to feel, you know, alone or unloved or suppressed. And we need to support each other. You know, women are awesome and we do so much. We raise kids, we build businesses, we do so much. And um, everyone should have a support system and everyone should help each other out. So thank you for having me, Michelle. I really appreciate it. Uh, well, I, I definitely wanted to because it's so in alignment with with my own mission and vision of, of Victorious Entrepreneurs. And I think it's so important for women to support one another. So thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much. And I will certainly connect with you again very soon. Bye-bye for now, DOD. Thanks, Michelle. Bye-bye. And to you, our wonderful Victorious FM listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed this interview as much as I have. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about DOD, please either check out the show notes or head over to victoriousentrepreneurs.com where all of our podcast guests are featured on our website. Please also check out all of our amazing free resources to help you through each stage of starting, launching and growing your own business. And don't forget to subscribe to Victorious FM on iTunes or Stitcher to make sure that you don't miss out on another inspiring episode. But until next week, stay victorious. You're listening to Victorious FM. Victorious Entrepreneurs, for women who are victorious in business and in life.